Hey, hola friends. It's Victoria here from Tree Living Yoga and you're listening to the Journey to Freedom podcast. This is a series of 10 episodes that I've recorded, sometimes just me, sometimes with someone else so that we can exchange ideas and see how we're we're feeling out this wonderful book, Remembering Freedom by Randall Simpson. This book accompanies trainings and retreats and it's an offering to women, offering them a pathway home to themselves. This book resonated with me so deeply that I found a way to connect and cherish my woman more than I knew was possible. I continue to find new and unfolding things in this book and I always have it with me. Caitlin and Tracy, who sometimes join me on these podcasts, have been using the book to study and guide them on their Reiki journey. And this book forms a big part of that course. So we're delving into it together from old and new perspectives. If this postcard speaks to you and you'd like to know a little bit more, I would love to hear from you. The accompanying book is available from Randall Simpson on Lyran.Earth or check out treelivingyoga.com where my trainings, retreats and other experiences are available. So let's, let's begin and explore this week's woman, wise, offering, mirroring, awakened nature. Welcome to episode six and today it's simply me sharing with you how I have found my way through the seasons and how I have tuned into them as a woman who who doesn't have a cycle. So I'm getting right into it here and uh, I know that this book and this way of um, understanding our flow in cycles has has helped me incredibly uh, in terms of flowing with my creativity, being compassionate to myself when when I'm struggling with energy or being social um, and and things like that. And we we briefly touched on this in episode one, and it's it's funny. Although we're only on episode six, but I'm quite new to podcasting stuff and when I listened back to episode one I was like oh whoops I forgot to add the introduction bit at the beginning and and you you dive straight into it so quickly and I feel that it would be nice to give it a little bit more context as well from the um, scientific side of things so I'm really lucky to be in touch with a uh, really talented, lovely woman called Monique, who has given some lectures for me on our yoga teacher training. And she is studying medicine at the moment, studying to be a doctor. And it was from her lectures and her understanding that I come across these phases, which I'm sure some of you that already monitor your menstrual cycle and things like that have heard of them before. but. This was totally new to me, and I'd never looked at it. And these uh, four phases of our cycle are known as the follicular stage, ovulatory stage, the luteal stage, and the menstrual stage. And these are known as infradian rhythms. So you've heard of the circadian rhythm and us uh, awesome beings that happen to be born in female bodies are lucky enough to have two. So we have that circadian rhythm, that rhythm of the night and day, which only men men have only that one. And we also have this infradian rhythm, this amazing journey of our hormones that travel up and down <laughs> and give us creativity and socialness, um, and also time when it is good to be productive and quiet and at home and just turning inwards a little bit. So 
these I'm just going back to, to this kind of perspective before I introduce um, the remembering freedom and, and my feelings with it so this follicular stage is the um, could be the spring season where you have uh, initiation and planting seeds preparing so it's like beginning opening to new things creativity and a fresh start and then when we move into the ovulatory stage this is the summer growth um, sprouting of the seeds opening up so this is that time when if you were looking to uh, get pregnant then this is all that kind of sociable and bubbliness and wanting to be out and be seen, have conversations, connect with people, enjoy being in communities. And then once we're past that, we come into this luteal phase, which could also be called autumn. And this is that sense of completion, harvesting fruits, um, you know, looking back on, on your work and being able to speak up for yourself in this phase is quite important in terms of um, saying no to things, you know, and not um, taking on more things than, than you can do. So as we move into this, this next phase, this is where our <coughs> immune system might drop a little bit. So in spring and summer, we have this um, energy and this higher immune system and it's like like the body's preparing to get pregnant, procreate. So it's really lively and out there. You can do more strenuous exercise. Um, and then as we move into the, the second phase, like the second half of the month, you have this autumn and winter. So if you think about what's happening in your body in terms of... Um, historically and ancestrally if you were to get pregnant now the immune system is dropping a little bit because as a like for the evolution of our, our species that is when you don't want the body to be attacking the um the growing cells if you were pregnant and so it starts to go into this right i'm gonna rest and just allow this to develop so you're a little bit more vulnerable in that space. And then the kind of final uh, week or final sort of quarter of that month is the menstrual phase. And this is then, um, could be called the winter phase. So I say could be, because for me, it's a, it's a slightly different season. But in this phase, we're in uh, winter. So we're now in rest, repair, reflection, looking inward. So how, how cool is that, that these feminine bodies that some of us have go through this beautiful seasons and you can experience all of these different things throughout your, your 28 day flow. So we, we talked about um, moon sites as well, and it's really incredible that we can be in this magical human body experiencing all of these different um, tones and messages and, and ways of reading ourselves and how we are and how we can be and how we can respond and how we can get the... Um, the best and most nourishing experience out of our our being and our lives. So when um, we chatted to Caitlin on episode one, Caitlin has been uh, sort of attuned to this way of thinking and already had some knowledge about these phases and is aware of how that works in her body and for her and sets boundaries according to the phases that she's in so 
when I looked at um, Randall's book initially in the seasons, I was, even though that was a few years ago, I was still in a non-menstruating type of phase. So it was really, um, it was wonderful for me to be able to find somewhere to begin to feel out the rhythm of what could be life tones and how I could feel into the yin energy in my body and the yang energy in my body and how I could really connect with that and understand what was going on for me when I was in um, <laughs> that. You know, when you kind of feel a little bit like you can't get out your own way and other times when you just have mo the most energy and you really want to be with people, be sociable, start chatting and socialising, which I have to be honest, that happens less for me. I'm not such a, a sociable person. I I do like company, um, but then there's this window I notice in the month where suddenly I'm like, oh yay, um, I really want to be that that social butterfly so I can I can grab it and work out when that's going to be for me and, and really go for it, which is amazing. And bizarrely enough, as you may have guessed, this is <laughs> that point for me. Um, so when you are somebody that doesn't have a, a menstrual cycle, when you look at how uh, the advice is generally kind of offered or guidance is given to you, it's to look at going with the moon. So if we thought about that day one to seven, so being like the day when you would have like your menstrual cycle, be in that beginning, some people may feel that that for them feels like the new moon and other people may feel like it's the full moon. So depending on, I guess, how you are and your perspective, um, most people it's said to be is the new moon. For me, it definitely feels like um, mostly the full moon. This um, period of time since the solstice in 2022, I have felt a little bit topsy-turvy, so it doesn't feel quite as um, quite as flowing as it has been doing in in previous months or years. But for me, that season normally, I begin it at the, the full moon and the full moon feels like even though that that amazing bright light energy like the, the whole glow of the moon and everything like that um it's very it's very kind of cooling and an inward turning for me so i feel that i'm in my for me my autumn so when you look at the the infradium uh system that that mon is following that's the the winter so when you're in like repair and rest and the menstrual cycle and for me this feels like I'm in autumn and that things are just falling away planting seeds so this autumn phase is for me focusing on if you check out the remembering freedom book on the copy that I have it might be slightly different if you have a, a new copy from Randall's website lyron.earth but in um, this copy I have it's page 90 where the seasonal influence starts so my um kind of autumn mindset if you like is focusing on ease um easing restrictions and just allowing life in you know uh allowing and just letting go of life which is um something that some i i'm quite i like being in control but so it's been a real journey for me to to let go of control in many ways and I have that time to go inward and that full moon really does maybe it's the little bit of um of pitter in me but the full moon really does kind of calm me and allow me to to go inward and gives me that that trust sensation so what <clears throat> I've done with a with a group is we created a a mandala like a little wheel and we drew on the wheel 28 days and 
divided those into the days for the seasons and either split that according to how you were ovulating in your menstrual cycle or according to the moon if you were somebody that didn't have a cycle. So we've drawn this lovely um, dial and circle, split it into the seasons and then been able to look from here what's happening for us, for me, for myself. And in that time, wrote down things like um, how I feel energy-wise, how I feel physically. Um, for me, I've also been using a little bit of a chakra focus and what chakra I've connected to at that time. And um, just to make it more complicated, we've also added the moon sites that I talked about in episode four with Tracy, so that it would show me the pattern at a glance of just looking at this dial. So with that, that full moon, in the last time that I looked at this, and when I'm looking back on my wheel, I can really feel that there was a lot of feminine energy present. And I did a lot of full yogic breath, um, a little bit of, of Kapalabhati breath during this time as well when I was feeling a little bit too um, inertia. Obviously, if you're on your, your menstrual cycle, then that's not such a, a preferred breath to do. But having that lovely full yogic breath, ujjayi breath, keeping that, that energy flowing and creating sound. So I found that, um, or I find that the mantra meditation and using sound in this phase is a really good way of helping me focus on my turning inward and just feeling that that grace and feeling that way of um, tapping in to finding the balance, you know, and not being, um, although observing the fact that you want to give yourself rest, give yourself time and allow yourself to, to move through this, but at the same time, staying a little bit uh, connected and focused and not just switching off. So I really like um, Satyam mantra and just encouraging myself to let go with joy. So anything that is, even though I, I don't think I'm the best singer, but um, actually I don't think I'm a good singer, but I enjoy it. You know, I, just, I love the sound. Um, I love the womb sounds like we talked about in episode two with the, the nurturing rites and um, I have, I'm trying to learn the harmonium. So this time is a great time for me in that, that autumn phase. So then for me, the next phase is summer. So I have that, that feeling of coming out of the menstrual phase and with um, Monique's kind of scientific look at it, you would then be going into um, your like follicular stage and spring, whereas I really feel that I'm then kind of waking up after that time. So for me, I've had the full moon and then moving out of the full moon, I come into this second week. And in that second week, I have this real like awakening energy and I start really enjoying my Kapalabhati breath, wanting to do more um, dance, more vinyasa flow and really enjoying um, Actually, I really enjoy like deeper meditations as well at this time and feel that I'm open to creativity. And this is also the, the season when we can connect with the, the fire element. So this is where I've, I've just been. And then we're coming up to the new moon. So for me then, I was born on a new moon. And for me in that, that new moon stage is my springtime. So it's transcending and harvesting. And interestingly, as I'm recording this, um, 
it's uh, a new moon. It's uh, 3.30 in the afternoon on um, Tuesday the 28th. And uh, the new moon is coming in about 12 hours. So I'm, I'm just transitioning from summer into spring. And this is um, one of my favorite phases. Uh, that new moon really seems to light up something in me to create me to feel more sociable. And I am in touch with my own movement, my sensuality. And it's just, it's a, it's a really wonderful time, which I didn't appreciate. Or if I did, it was in the back of my mind locked up. So now what I've started to do is, especially in combination of like the book uh, and also chatting to Monique, who has also been on Randy's training and um, was is doing this as a uh, her interest and study. I've really started to pay attention to being more sociable at that time and knowing that I can get so much more out of my uh, socialness if you like in that week so this is where I fit in the things that um, are going to be with more than one people sociable groups going out um, mixing with people and uh, tonight I'm going to a like free movement dance with um, Sarah Barker uh, so all those things, I can I can feel that that in me, and it's great to, I suppose for me, the point I'm trying to make is it's good to capitalise on that because then now I know that in a week's time I'm not going to feel the same way. So in a week's time for me, I'm going to be getting into my winter. So it's that um, what would be a luteal phase, just kind of coming up before that menstrual phase. And before I really started to tune in and listen to this and listen to my own life tones and the own messages from my body, I would have thought, oh, that's okay. Although we can't meet up this week, I'll, I'll do that next week. Whereas now I know that if I do that this week, I'm going to be my best, most sociable self and I'm going to show up and enjoy conversations and I'm going to really be present. Whereas next week... Um, I'm going to want to be a little bit more inward and connecting with that stillness, you know, and really trying to um, even, I can force myself to, to go out and be sociable, but it doesn't really offer the same exchange of energy and I don't have the same presence that I will do in this week. So in the winter, I have this nice sensation of cleansing, stillness, and, and clarity. And when I'm in this place, it's really nice for me to get on to finishing off things with my website, doing some admin stuff, being nice and nurturing to myself, having a slightly slower practice. And I like doing things like, I mean, I'm not a big bath person, but I do like having nice body massages, giving myself that abiyanga, self-massage, um, having a little bit lighter food and spending a little bit more time in a, in a meditative place. So it's great to be able to have mapped that a little bit and think, oh, wow, I can see how I'm flowing, you know, week by week. And it's, um, it's really amazing, it's really inspiring. And I would love to hear if, it's, I think that all of us, I'd love to hear how, how you find your, your month. You know, do you feel the moon? It's like we've got all these wonderful tools to be able to really appreciate how we're, how we're working, how we are being creative and when we can plan, when we can rest. And so often, especially when I think about like my mum or somebody who, who is a mum or who has lots of responsibilities, sometimes we're programmed to just plough on and keep going. And in that doingness, instead of just being, 
we can sort of push through things that feel uncomfortable, even in terms of exercising. And if you're in that, that beginning part in spring and summer, then you have so much more, more energy and so much more ability to be able to perform in, in a sport or an exercise. Whereas in the second half, uh, it's much harder for you to do that. So maybe even in terms of you know, not trying to get a personal best if you're running or at the gym or, or something like that, but just being able to invite that compassion and find those times when um, you can just live seasonally, eat seasonally and do wonderful things to, to nourish yourself and nourish your body. Um, also, interestingly enough, our metabolism in the second half tends to speed up and we've got a stimulated metabolism. So those cravings that you get for a bit of extra food, um, uh, that's what's going on in that phase. So I have uh, lots of information that is on different foods that can help you on exercising and uh, how you can make the most of this time. Um, if you wanted to get in touch, either uh, drop us an email or visit the website treelivingyoga.com and all our contact details are on there, all my contact details are on there. It would be lovely to hear if you have experience of living in this seasonal way and just understanding this great planet like our body is like a planet it's so exciting to be um feeling all these seasons just in one month you don't have to to wait for the year to experience them you're having them going on in your body all in one month and um one thing that i'd like to to leave you with actually is something that uh, i think monique said to me is even though we've got these internal seasons we also have to be aware of what the external season is so I might be in this spring phase and outside it's summer. So it's, it's all, you know, amazingly positive and, and up. But other times you might be in that spring, but outside is winter, you know, and, and noticing how that's affecting you. So, yes, that is um, everything from me this week. And thank you so much for tuning in. If these episodes speak to you and you would like to come on a training with us, we have uh, trainings in Bali, in Mallorca, in England, in Australia, or you'd just like to get the book or come on a retreat, then get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. It's victoria at treelivingyoga.com or visit the website. Take care, have a wonderful weekend.